Okay, good morning everyone. So it has been some time since uh, we have lessons. So uh, for today's video, we are going to break it into three parts. So in the first part, I will do a quick uh, recall exercise with you so that we can recap on what we have covered before this HBL has started. Then in part two, we are going to cover from page one and two, some of the basic content in uh, electromagnetism and then we are going to cover two examples on uh, how we answer structure question in this topic and finally in the last part we will just quickly run through some of the key things you may want to take note in your homework which is your checkout activity consists of two pages and that's it for today's lesson okay so uh Let's get it started. We will start off with a quick recap on what we have covered so far. So here, what we have learned in uh, chapter 20 is that when there is a group of electron and uh, if by some means we can align the domains, then it will give rise to a strange phenomenon, which we now call magnetic effect. So you will notice that there is this new vocab coming out and you will use it quite often uh, in your structure question, magnetic effect. Uh, when I have just one magnetic field, then uh, nothing interesting uh, come about, but uh, interesting phenomenon will come about when there is more than one uh, magnetic field. For example, if I put just a magnet here, whether it is magnetic or not, I won't be able to tell. But if you put it like to a piece of iron, then uh, induced magnetism will occur so again there's a new term here so when do we use this term induced it's mostly used when you put a neutral or a, a non-magnetized object near to a magnet then this north pole over here of the permanent magnet will induce a uh, induced opposite pole over here Right, and when there is an induced pole, then there will be interaction of the two magnetic field now because now inside this iron, the domains will be aligned by the magnetic field of this main magnet. So when that happens, then you can comment on the oh the force of uh the force of uh, attraction here is stronger than the uh, force of repulsion between this and this right that's induced magnetism and like i said the new vocab will be interaction interaction of fields okay a magnetic field right will give rise to a force right this force most of the time is called magnetic force or in chapter 21 electromagnetic force so basically that is chapter 20 and uh from chapter 20, we realized that hey, actually we can align electrons fairly uh, quite easily by actually having a battery. So down here, what I have is that, oh, we know that in electricity, if we apply a potential difference or a EMF, then basically we are just pushing the electrons in one direction. And when electrons are moving in a net direction then it is very similar to having their domains of the conductor aligned so we now know that whenever there is a conventional current it will accompany a magnetic field that is circular in nature and to determine the direction of the magnetic field we will use our right hand grid rule right so when we use our right hand grid rule in this case then uh, this thumb so down here let's look at this section of the circuit this thumb will represent the current and then the accompanying magnetic field will be represented by the index finger so now we know that this index finger points here so now we know that these fields are going here so uh, we have uh, come to a point whereby we can determine how the magnetic field of a strict wire looks like and then after that we come to the 
another part when we say that oh now i have two straight wire if these two straight wire are having current flowing in the same direction then uh, why will there be a force come about okay uh, if the question is asking you why then the the answer must include that oh okay that the uh, current will have a uh, accompanying magnetic field and since now we have two wires that means now we have two current that means i would have a interaction of magnetic field and uh, once we have an interaction of magnetic field then there will be a force okay this force can be explained by the concentration of the field pattern right so most of the time we can make use of this framework to actually answer most of the questions so in this case um, can you remember uh, what kind of force uh, will these two wire give rise to is it an attractive one or is it a repulsive one so in chinese we say uh, or you say right so if they are going in the same direction is like your friend uh, if you are walking with your friend in the same direction then chances are you all will talk and then the distance between you and your friend will get nearer and nearer so we say that when uh, the conventional current are in the same direction then the, the interaction of the fields will give rise to uh, attractive force and uh, attractive force it means what it means that the field on the outside will be more dense than the field over here so the field between the wire must be less dense and the field outside will be denser and now you know that it will look like this right it will look like something like that yeah so you can see in the in between there is this gap over here which is actually less dense than the field that is outside yeah and uh, the opposite will be true if you have a current going in opposite direction so it's like your friend are going having a different mindset then of course you all will be further and further away and uh, remember these two forces is actually action reaction force so they will always be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction so we cover that as well uh, in terms of straight wire and the magnetic field and after that we have also talked about what if i don't have a straight wire what if i have a wire that is being bent right and when we have a wire that is uh, bent then we know that okay all these rings will get squeezed into the loop like that so in a way basically in inside this loop there will be like a very condensed field and uh, we can represent this it's very difficult for me to draw so i'm not going to try um, we we then know that uh, if i have a ring like that then that means i can create what we call a solenoid so a solenoid basically is just a coil of wire wrapped around a, a rod or an imaginary rod so this rod is called a core so this thing is called a core and then we can wrap wires around it and it will be easier for us to picture how it get coiled around so we can coil it like that yeah so this thing this this guy this entire circular thing is actually called a solenoid uh, sometimes we can call it a coil uh, if you just want to talk about one of these this is actually called oops this is actually called turns okay so you need to know the term okay then uh, we say that oh okay if now i connect it to a power source then a current will run through it so whenever we are analyzing uh, oops i did it wrong uh, this part should be behind right oops okay that's why it's important to draw this call you can see yeah so whenever we want to know what is the resulting magnetic effect caused by this solenoid we will focus on the front wire of the solenoid so how do we uh, deduce the magnetic field pattern 
that is uh, generated by this solenoid, we will still use our right hand grip rule. But this time round, your right hand, okay, then your, your, your thumb, and then your finger, so this is your finger. Okay, you are looking the top of your hand. Huh? So your fingers over, oops, sorry, wrong color. Your finger over here should align to the wire on top of the cord. So if you are able to align that, then you, oops, sorry, I, I don't need to do that. Then you can see that this current or then you can see that this current are going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. So your fingers are all pointing up. Yeah. So here your finger is actually representing the current on top of the core. And what your thumb is pointing is actually the North Pole. So in this case, the North Pole will be here. And then of course, uh, to here, it will be the South Pole. Yeah, so uh, in the before the HPL, we actually learned about the solenoid and how we use our right hand, we modified our right hand grip rule to actually apply to the solenoid to determine the magnetic poles resulted by the solenoid current. Okay, so that is what we have covered so far. So now let's go back to our one. Okay, so now we are back into our worksheet. We can then apply our right hand grip rule to some of these uh, uh, questions. Okay, so here the first question I'm showing you how a solenoid looks like in the real life. So like I say, it's basically just a coil of wire. Sometimes we can represent it like that, but most of the time in the exam, we will show it this way. Okay, so basically it's just a coil of wire. Okay, shaped into a spring shape. So down here, when a current flows through the solenoid, a magnetic field will be generated around the wire. Okay, so uh, when we draw the magnetic field line, you can see that down here, this will be the resulting north, this will be the resulting south. So if now I want to ask you, for example, what is the current flowing through in these wires? you can actually use your right hand grip rule to find it. So how do I do it? I would then point my right hand so that the thumb position, this will be pointing north as aligned to this. And then naturally you will find that your fingers will be like this. And so if you curl your finger, uh, if you curl your finger, now your hand is orientated in in, in this way right now your hand is like that so now if you curl if you close your 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 palm so that it becomes the grip root then your hand would look something like this right and you can see that now your uh, finger your index fingers are pointing this way so now you know that oh the current must be going like that And this is the conventional current okay so that's how you can use your right hand grip rule to, to actually deduce many of the things from one diagram so let's uh, continue filling in the bank blanks uh, magnetic field at the center is parallel so uh, which is this referring to magnetic field at the center i'm referring to here this part so you can see that the magnetic field are very dense they are almost parallel so it means that it is very very strong so down here it is concentrated so it is a very strong field so down here the other uh, box the current are flowing in which uh, in a similar to the magnetic field form between wire oh okay so um, if just now we use our right hand grip rule and you can see that the current are actually flowing like that so when the current are flowing like that actually uh, between this current and this current, you can say that uh, they are actually flowing in the same direction, right? Yeah, and we learned that in strict wires, if the wire are flowing in strict uh, in uh, in the same direction, then it will actually cause a force of attraction between them. 
Okay, so basically each of these wire in the solenoid, they are attracting each other as well. So it, it actually compact the uh, solenoid and as a result, the magnetic field around them, so this field around them, it is going to be very, very strong, especially in between them. Okay, so imagine this part, this part I'm saying, because now there's many straight wire. Okay, so this green field will look like, like this. So it's like a giant loop. Yeah. So that's why the, the few lines that is that is inside this loop will be very, very strong, parallel and condensed. Okay. So due to the shape of the solenoid, magnetic field line will be concentrated at the center. Overall, the field pattern, uh, the field pattern has the shape of a well, has the shape of a permanent magnet. Lo. It looks like a permanent magnet. So down here, if I erase everything, and now you look at it, yeah, if I have north here and the south here, you can see that it is very similar to a, to a bar magnet, right? This field and this field, they are very similar, okay? So uh, I think that is a typo. And I will change that in the uh, worksheet for next year. Okay, indicate the figure below how the right hand grip rules. So now we say that the thumb actually uh, represents the uh, magnetic poles. And uh, basically our fingers over here uh, will indicate the uh, direction of the conventional current. Okay, this is a uh, different from whereby I have a straight wire, then my thumb, in the case of a straight wire, my thumb actually represent the current, and then my hand, my, my, my index finger actually represent the magnetic field. So uh, this and this are two variants of the right hand grip rule. Okay? Okay, let's look at part C. We are going to uh, uh, use a right hand grip rule in a more exam like kind of diagram. So I need to indicate the direction. So the direction of current, we are always talking about the conventional one. So conventional current goes from positive to negative. So then you can see that my current is all going up like that. So now it's your turn. You look at solenoid 2 and you tell me the direction of current. So the wires in front of the core, what is the direction of the current? Down or up? Okay, so that is some pause time for you. So positive minus current goes up but when it goes into the solenoid we are focusing on the wires on top or in front of the core so you can see that it is going down okay so the answer is down okay so we have done this now let's apply the right hand grip rule and find out what is the magnetic pole okay so I will do solenoid 1 together with you and then you do solenoid 2 so down here, what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to orientate my palm, okay, uh, with the current. So I'm going to use my index finger first because I do not know the pole. I want to find the pole, right? So I cannot say that, oh, my thumb should point right or my thumb should point left. Okay, so let's do solenoid one. So imagine you have a rod. Okay, then now you are going to put your fingers up. So I will put my fingers up. And uh, if you are using your right hand, you will like that, right? So your fingers are pointing up. You don't even need to grip it. Okay, because it's going up. Okay, and then your thumb will go this way. So how will it look like? 
let's say now this is the 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 rod and uh now the current is 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 but this is my right hand huh? so uh this is the current that's going up right and the current is in front of the core so i should put my hand like that so you can see my thumb is pointing to your left okay uh in the video it will be mirror image so a bit confusing so i suggest for you you take a core this is the core and you focus on the current that is flowing in front of the core so your current in the picture now is going up right so it's going up like that and then the thumb will point to the magnetic pole so you have to try it okay So if you do that, then you will realize that uh, this is the north and uh, this is the south, okay? And I want you to try for this. So have you tried? So if you have tried correctly, then uh, find a pencil, right? Now you have to uh, make sure your 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 index finger is pointing down because uh, down here they are pointing down so your index finger need to point down in front of the uh, in front of the pole so let me uh, do some uh, correction so it should look like that covering it and so in if this is your right hand then the only way to do it is such that your thumb is actually pointing like that okay I have a giant long finger so actually down here is your north, this is your south, okay? And uh, if you notice that uh, both circuit has a variable resistor, why? Because if you don't have one, then basically your circuit will look like this. It's just a singular wire with a battery, so if you have a singular wire with very low resistance and if you have a battery then it is called short circuit right yeah and the wire will heat up and then a uh, possible electrical fire right so why do you need a resistor to keep it safe this is to prevent short circuit yeah so um this uh, solenoid thing like I said before we break up for the uh, HBL is that uh, why it is very interesting for scientists is that firstly magnetism will create when you have two magnetic field the interaction will create a force this means that this force it is a non-contact force right you can you can like uh, magic like that you can like attract things uh, without a contact uh, so this force become very interesting uh, unfortunately with permanent magnet the force cannot be switched off or switched on meaning that you have very little control but now with electromagnetism you can actually turn on the magnetism by supplying the current and then you can completely switch it off or remove the magnetic effect by switching off the current and on top of that, now that you understand how a solenoid works, you can actually strengthen the strength by having uh, more turns, a larger current or lower resistance, so on and so forth. So not only that you can switch on the force or switch off the force, but you can control the magnitude of the force. And because now you can change the pulse by changing the direction of the current, you can also play around with uh, the nature of the force whether it is repulsive or attractive so there are actually three methods to change the strength of the magnetic field created by a solenoid so we are talking about solenoid only eh? so we can increase the strength or increase the uh, magnetic field the strength of the magnetic field please don't just say increase the magnetic field eh? you have because magnetic field consists of many things density concentration direction so on and so forth so be very specific you increase the strength by connecting more batteries in series so if you do that then you are increasing the current so remember method and ideas are different if you are just telling me increase the current 
it is not a complete answer you have to tell me the method to increase the current so down here you are connecting batteries in series to increase the current in the solenoid right so down here this one is an idea and these guys connecting more battery in series it is a method so be very careful another way is to increase the number of turns in the solenoid so this is a method as well yeah the last thing is to insert a soft magnetic core into the solenoid so that the magnetic field lines are concentrated by the core so down here even though there is no core uh, you can see that the magnetic field line is already quite concentrated but if you insert a core like this into the uh, into the uh, solenoid then you have learned from your magnetic shielding or your magnetic screening in your chapter 20 that as long as you have an object the field line will be even more concentrated so that's why most of the solenoid consists of a core okay so let's look at some uh, application and like i said in uh, chapter 20 we are going to go back to revisit it so one way of making permanent magnet is that uh, we use a solenoid to actually align the domains inside the steel bar so what we are going to do we are going to put the steel bar into the solenoid and we connect it to a direct current uh, this is important because if you don't connect it to a direct current then the resulting uh, magnetic field will not be always south on one side and always north on the other side imagine you put it in an alternating current it will be changing direction and therefore your magnetic field will be flipping flipping at a high rate you know at a high frequency so you need to use a direct current so once you use a direct current you will actually form a very strong magnetic field inside the solenoid so it is at this point uh, when you have a steel bar inside it, the domains inside the steel bar will get aligned by the solenoid's magnetic field. So the strong magnetic field uh, generated by the solenoid will actually align the domain in the steel bar and magnetize it. And then what you should do is that while the bar is still inside the solenoid, then you switch it off. Because if you, if you take out the steel bar while it is on, then your aligned domain in the steel bar as you pull out will get affected by this end. So for example, if you want to pull out the steel bar uh, to your left. So, uh, okay, before you pull it out, the steel bar, the domain in the steel bar will get aligned such that the north will be here and the south will be here right because it will follow the magnetic field pattern of the solenoid but as you pull it out this is north this is south the blue the blue ink here represent the magnetic field pattern of the solenoid so as you pull it out right initially this guy it was south but when you pull it out then it will get affected by this north here and then the whole thing will get messed up so because of that you should switch off the current before you take out the steel bar so that's the right way of magnetizing so if we can magnetize something with a solenoid then of course we can demagnetize something with our solenoid and to do that we do exactly opposite instead of supplying a direct current we will use an alternating current because our job in demagnetizing is that we want to mess it up. We want to mess up an already aligned domain. So if we put an AC supply, this is the symbol for AC supply. Sometimes it will be positive, sometimes minus, sometimes minus, sometimes positive. So it flips around that. This means that sometimes it will be north here, south here, sometimes it will be south here, north here. So imagine you are in a platoon and your platoon commander suddenly give you command like turn left turn right turn left turn right turn left turn right at a very high frequency the result is that the whole platoon will get very confused right it's like changing policy like <coughs> some neighboring country, countries uh, yeah uh, every now and then it will be very very uh, confusing to the general population right so um 
That's why you want a uh, one direction, one policy, and then we execute it. Okay, so to demagnetize a uh, solenoid, basically we want to mess up the alignment in the domain, right? So we use the alternating current. So we explain that. Um, so what is the effect of that? So basically the uh, alternating current will induce an alternating magnetic field, right? To mess up the alignment. And uh, in the first case, in uh, this case, we want to we want to uh, switch off the current before we take out, right? But this time around, if we want to demagnetize it, then we would want to leave it on and as we take it out. So why? Uh, imagine you are messing up the domain of this magnet here. So that you mess it up, left, right, left, right, left, right, north, south, north, south, north, south. If you switch off suddenly at the end, the last cycle or the last command given by your platoon commander could be turn left and then all your domain will be okay turn left so it's like i'm i'm swapping between north south south north and da 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 da, da domain are all confused and all that and then at the last moment you switch it off so then the last command will stay and so some domain will be aligned to north south uh, south north in this case so how do you avoid having this last command given. Well, to avoid having the last alignment given by the alternating current is that as, as you are demagnetizing it, when you are done, you pull it out while this is still on. So as you pull out, the commands are still changing. Sometimes north here, south here, sometimes south here, north here, right? So as you pull out, the alignment of the domain is still getting messed up. So as you pull until it is far enough, from the magnetic effect of this alternating magnetic field, then you switch it off. So with that, then basically all the parts of the domain alignment will be all messed up. Okay, so that is how you magnetize and demagnetize using a solenoid. And this part of the content is actually for your chapter 20. Now that you understand what is a solenoid. Okay, so this is the um, last part of today's lesson. We will uh, look at the uh, some examples that is taken out from uh, TYS. So normally in uh, TYS, they will give you a device and then uh, sometimes they will ask you to comment on how it works. Sometimes they will ask you to explain how it works. So when we talk about explain kind of question, uh, some keywords that we will always be using is interaction of fields, induced poles, things like that. So later on, we will see how it go, comes out. And then uh, sometimes they will also ask you how to improve on the device. So this is uh, your first example. So down here, basically this uh, electric bell. Uh, the bell is here, the hammer is here. So when the hammer strikes the bell, then uh, you will have the sound. So when we approach this kind of question, uh, you need to know that uh, each of these terms, they are here for a reason. So they are here for you to uh, actually uh, use in your answer so that you can point, uh, you can highlight to the examiner which part of this device is uh, interacting with the other part. So as long as it is being labeled out, it means that uh, it serves a certain key functions and you should focus on that. So when we are being asked such a question, uh, we should always look out for where's the battery and we try to complete the circuit in our brain. So down here you will see uh, this is the battery and uh, if the switch is on, then the current will go here, go here. So down here there's a point contact. Uh, whenever we see a point contact, it means that there is a chance for this device to break contact. So for now, uh, in the diagram, the contact is closed. So the current will flow here, down to here. I think this particular box is just a mounting device. And since it is not labeled, I think uh, chances are it is useless. So I will ignore it for the moment. And then the current will continue flowing. And there you go, you will have a solenoid. So whenever you have a solenoid, that means there will be a magnetic effect over here. And then after that, you come in, complete the circuit. So once you have this mental picture, then uh, you know that, okay, when the switch is closed, I would have current flowing like that on my solenoid. 
and therefore on this side of the core what kind of pole we will be having so use your right hand grip rule and you should position your hand like this think imagine that there is a rod like that and your in, uh, index fingers should be following the current that is on top of the rod so it is all pointing down like that yeah so therefore you will position your hand this way and uh, if you are using your right hand then your thumb will point this way okay so therefore you will have your north here and the south here so that is the magnetic effect of the current on the solenoid once we have this uh, north pole over here uh, because this is soft iron soft iron meaning that it will uh, it will magnetize and demagnetize very quickly so since uh, the solenoid will become an uh, electromagnet and I will have a north here it means that I would have an induced south and an induced north here so because this is a uh, unlike pole they will attract uh, if the soft iron get attracted to the core then it will bring this hammer because they are connected right if you can see down here yeah the soft iron is connected to the hammer so when the soft iron get attracted towards the left hand side then the hammer will go left hand side and uh, basically this is what would happen this is the solenoid and uh, the hammer will knock onto the bell and the bell will rang now the tricky thing is that when uh, your your soft iron move from right to left then the initial point contact over here will be broken so when this entire thing move over here and strikes the bell then the point contact over here will be broken now when the point contact is broken will there be any more current flowing through the solenoid no right so when there's no current flowing through the solenoid will there be a force of attraction over here no right and since soft iron is a soft magnetic material it will get demagnetized quickly so it will lose its induced pole in the soft iron and then the soft iron will move back to the original position and when that happens it will make contact again and then the cycle repeat and that's why you hear the tang 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 and instead of tang and it stop there so if down here the question says that oh i want to use steel steel being a hard magnetic material it will demagnetize very slowly and it will magnetize very slowly so when you turn it on it will take some time before the steel get attracted so it will ting one time on the on the belt and hammer and then when you when when the contact is broken the steel will continue to be magnetized and it will take some time before it get demagnetized and then return back to its original position so if down here instead of soft iron you use steel then the frequency of the bell will be very slow okay it will be like you switch on and then wait for a while and then it will tang, and then after that contact is broken but the steel is being magnetized so it gets stuck onto the core and then after a while then it gets demagnetized and then after that it returns and then after that take some more time before it gets magnetized again and then tang another time so if you are replacing the soft iron with steel uh, you can still get the bell to work it's just that the ringing will be very low frequency okay so once you see a device like that you need to construct uh, uh, this kind of uh, imagined consequences in your head and now we can verbalize it so uh, when it is first close so we need to mention how the magnetism arises so when the current flows through the solenoid then a uh, north right yep then a north pole you get induced on the right side of the core quickly yeah because we need to talk about the response time right and then 
uh, on the soft iron so here we are talking about this part whereby on the switch there will be north and south and then I will induce a south and north on the uh, on the iron, soft iron so here on the soft iron if I blow it up then here will be south this will be north because you will induce the uh, opposite pole so down here you can say uh, an opposite pole is induced on the soft iron as a result right uh, how does uh, where will the force of attraction add on so since they are unlike pole unlike pole will attract right uh, attract not attraction so unlike pole attract force of attraction will act on the soft iron and as a result the hammer will move to the left and then it will strike the bell so since uh, the question only want us to talk about when it first switch on uh, we don't need to talk about the consequence yeah so in uh, part b uh, this is the part whereby we need to explain how the hammer return to its original position and strike again so down here we need to focus on talking about how the contact is broken and uh, consequence of it so when the hammer strikes the bell the uh, the point contact right okay point contact point contact yeah the point contact will move left i'm sorry about this this will cause the circuit to open yeah uh, because down here when it moves to the left right this entire thing move to the left then the point contact down here is stationary it will lose contact with this point and so the current from the battery cannot go cannot pass through yeah so down here current stop flowing to the solenoid iron is a soft magnetic material so the iron core will lose its magnetism and uh, uh and the spring i think there's a spring yep the spring here this spring the spring will actually return return the soft iron hammer and uh, the soft iron and the hammer back to back to the right so down here this part the spring will ensure that the the this entire thing will stay here so only when there is a force of attraction then your soft iron will move to the left once the magnetism over here is lost then the spring over here will return this entire thing to the right again yeah so then after that it will close the circuit and it will repeat so describe what will happen so down here we we just talk about it when it is a steel so steel is basically a hard magnetic material so it will take a long time before the hammer strikes the bell and the core, once it is magnetized, uh, oh, we talked about the core, sorry. So now, uh, just now at the beginning of the lesson, we talked about if I change this part into steel, what happened? So now in the question, they are not talking about that part. They are saying that this core, if now I become steel, what will happen? So this is interesting because uh, if you replace this core, with steel once you turn on the dc supply the magnetic field will actually align the domain in the steel uh, completely and because steel is hard magnetic material it will turn into a permanent magnet and if this thing becomes a permanent magnet then it will forever attract this soft iron towards it and even if the contact is broken uh, the core has become a magnet so you you won't be able to switch off the magnetism even if you break the contact over here so it means that the bell will be just like Tung! and then that's it yeah so down here the core will retain its magnetism and the hammer will not be able to return to its original position even with the spring yeah because now that the the core has become a very strong magnet it will, it will attract the thing Okay, let's move on to another example. So down here, uh, I have some wire uh, around a rectangular plastic tube. So this is plastic, 
right? And then I have two iron rod inside. Uh, and then they asked me to predict what is the movement. So if I switch it on, uh, how will the current move along these wires, up or down? So plus, minus, it will go this way. So it will be up, 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 up. So how will be the magnetic effect? So I have a call. How should I place my hand? I should place my hand like that, right? Yeah, I will be covering this part. Yeah, and uh, naturally my thumb will be here. So I will have north here. So you have to imagine that uh, down here, now there's a very, 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 very strong feel, right? Uh, this is, hey, wait, 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 did I draw wrong when I do that? Oh, north will be here. Sorry, north will be here. So I draw the hand wrong. So if your hand is like that, if you are using right hand, then the hand will be like that. Yeah, so north, north will be here. Yeah, north will be here. Okay. So if north will be here, that means my very strong field over here will be north. And if I put some soft magnetic material over here, meaning that the domain inside this iron rod will get aligned by this very, very strong field of the solenoid very quickly. So as a result, so as a result, what will happen? So as a result, the domain inside the rod will get aligned in the same direction as my very strong field. So I have very strong field over here, right? So if I have very strong field over here and the field direction is like that, then the domain inside will also be aligned this way. So that's why I have north, north, south, south here. And since they are light pole, then it means they will repel against each other, meaning that my iron rod will move apart. Yeah, because light pole repel. So now I have to explain why they will move apart. So I have to verbalize my thinking. So the cause of all this is actually the solenoid. So I will begin there. So when I have current flow through a solenoid, uh, on the right side will be the south pole is induced and then I have north on the other side. So this very strong magnetic field induced by the solenoid will actually align the domain of the iron rod in the same direction. Yeah, because I will push all the domains uh, and align them with my magnetic field. So as a result, the right end of both the iron rod will become uh, the right. The right will become south. Yeah, and the opposite pole at the end. So since light pole repel, uh, the rods will repel against each other. Can? So uh, what are some keywords that we always use? Uh, we always talk about how the current through the solenoid we actually produce a uh, induced magnetic field why is it induced because this magnetic field comes from the current right uh, then after that this field will either interact with another field and then it will cause a force of repulsion or you can say that uh, due to light pole repel or unlight pole attract then uh, some forces will arise. Okay, so what I want you to do, I want you to try the checkout activity, question six, uh, seven and eight. So if you look at question six, uh, it is actually very similar to this question. This question, both rod are of the same length and they are inside the same solenoid. Okay, in the checkout question, they are not the same, uh, they are basically in different position of the coin. So try your best. Just remember, what is the gist of question 6? 
the solenoid's magnetic field align the domain of the rod. So same thing here, there's a solenoid, the magnetic field from the solenoid will align the domain of the rods. So you try your best. Okay, for question 7, it is similar. This is like a relay. Read the context, understand what is its purpose. There is also a contact point, meaning that uh, the core and the arm, when they attract, it will do something to the contact point and uh, that will achieve a certain purpose. Okay. And then for question 8, it's actually your circuit breaker. So from here, you will know how a circuit breaker works. I can show you a short clip uh, to solidify your understanding on circuit breaker. So let me find the video for you. This is the one. Inside the circuit breaker. So down here, there are several things. I think I can play the video and you can watch it. The components, the actuator mechanism, contacts, the terminals where we make the wire connections, thermal magnetic strip, and last but not least, the lever that we use to turn a circuit breaker on or off or reset it in case it trips. We now have too many appliances running on one outlet, which has created a situation where the current draw of the appliances exceeds the amperage rating of the circuit breaker. This overcurrent condition heats up the bimetallic element, changing its shape to the point where it releases the lever, trips the circuit breaker, and interrupts our circuit. Let's watch that again. So in an actual situation, of course, the, the buttons will not fly off because there's a housing holding onto the different component. But uh, you can see that uh, when a strong current flow through, uh, in this case, they use a bimetallic strip. So they use heating to actually trigger the uh, mechanism to open the circuit. But uh, in our case, we do not use a bimetallic strip to actually trigger the thing, but instead we use this mechanism over here so normally when uh, when you have a current flowing through down here it will still turn the solenoid into a it will still give rise to a magnetic effect but this soft iron latch will not get attracted towards your solenoid in normal situation meaning that there is a kind of mechanism holding onto this soft iron latch such that in normal situation the magnetic attractive force or the electromagnetic force will not be able to overcome the holding force on the latch so in normal situation when the current is still small or at normal uh, magnitude then the magnetic effect over here will not be able to overcome uh, the force holding onto the latch so it will remain latched but when there is a very strong current flowing through the solenoid then the magnetic effect will become stronger until it overcome the soft iron latch and then it will pull it down once the latch come down then the spring here will push this pin out and when this pin is being pushed out then the contact over here will be lost so actually this pin over here is actually made of metal. So when it is made of metal, then the current from here will touch the pin. Pin being metallic, we actually conduct the electricity to the other end and then it will let it flow. So what happens is that when the latch is being uh, attracted downwards towards your solenoid, this spring over here will push this entire pin out such that the pin will now look like that. So once the pin is out, then over here, you will form a gap. So there's no more pin to close the gap. So that's how you open the circuit in this scenario. So the video that I show you just now, the, the trigger mechanism is actually using a bimetallic strip to actually trigger off a spring. That's why the component will just spring up. So down here, if you take another look, 
So here's a better video. So basically, the guy. Uh, All right, so that looked pretty good. The, As you can see, our breaker is now tripped, and that's what it looks like when a circuit breaker trips. So I'm gonna reset this breaker here let's take a look and see what it looks like when you reset it to reset a trip breaker a lot of people get confused with this you first have to turn it off you can see what the levers do inside and then turn it on and now our circuit is closed and we're yeah. ready for our next take the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to replicate a short circuit a complete short circuit i know it's going to seem crazy but i'm going to do it really simple. I'm just going to get two wires and touch them together, which is going to be a realistic replication of a short circuit and see what the breaker does. First thing I'm going to do is get my welding mask and my gloves for safety. Oh yeah, baby. Our dollar store extension cord. We're going to unplug our appliances and plug in our extension cord. All right, here we go. Short circuit condition. In three, two, one. Now, in a short circuit condition, this breaker does something pretty amazing. There's so much current passing through that strip, it creates a strong magnetic field that pulls that lever open almost instantly. I found it mind boggling how fast this actually happens. And if we look at the image data, we can see that the entire event took a mere six milliseconds. After watching the overload and the short circuit scenarios, the one thing I noticed is that this particular breaker, which is the most common household type, seems to be thermomagnetic. What that means is they've combined two mechanisms in one, a thermal overload for gradual overcurrent situations and a magnetic device in situations that need to be interrupted immediately. Oh, I just almost touched that. Short circuit number two. Here it goes. So I will stop here. Uh, your homework will be um, to finish up uh, page five and six, and uh, you just need to take the picture of page five and six and upload to the Google Classroom, which I will open in uh, uh, maybe at three, I will open it. Uh, it, it will be due on uh, Wednesday. I think I will set it on Wednesday. And then I will take a look at a few uh, Okay, I, I, yeah, Wednesday. I think Wednesday will be good. Yeah, so uh, if it is, you all have too much work, but then during the FaceTime, you told me that you have too much time and too little work. So if it's really overloading you, you can uh, WhatsApp me and uh, ask for an extension. Okay, but I think for most of you, you should be able to submit by Wednesday night. Okay, so I'll stop here and uh, good day.